Well, I might as well use the track from the YouTube. Oh, I changed this tempo. <laughs> Playback speed two. Here we go, normal. Oh, hey. Hey, Roger. So we started a new series on uh, bluegrass playing. Bruce said, don't tell him that I'm not an expert. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce, I can't do that. It's hard for me to do that. Um, but it was funny because somebody, I was asking, what should we learn next? And somebody said, well, what do you want to learn next? And I thought, well, you know, that's a great idea. Because I, I actually, even in the blues basics lessons that I was doing, I was learning. Um, I, I have a very good friend. Uh, in fact, I was just talking to him yesterday. And um, he's played on a million movies and, and all that. And his his email ad had address is guitar hack. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, he's not a guitar act. So I don't know. There's there's something about it. It's kind of like the session guys, I think, tend to be a little bit more um, uh, kind of self-aware of their lack of abilities, I think, because we are asked to do so many different styles. Um, whereas somebody who specializes in one style may have a bigger attitude just by nature because they're actually really good at one style. Um Yeah, that was Jan, uh, Jan's Reel. So I named it for Dennis's uncle in honor of Dennis's uncle. I wrote this yesterday. And uh, so the PDF for this is in the Discord. And the Discord link is at the top there. Okay. Um, and so I put it. It's in Music and Tap. And it works over our uh, the, the jam track. So <clears throat> Bruce, in, in, in response to your question, the tempo can be whatever you want. Um, it's funny because it, 100 is pretty slow for bluegrass. Uh, very, there's not really any bluegrass songs that are 100, maybe 200, but not 100. Um, so it would go something like this. That's that's the tune. Um, and again, I, the cool thing about YouTube is I could take this up to uh, playback speed. I could make it 1.25, which would actually, because it's the original speed is 100, that would make this um, uh, 125, which is cool. Let me just do, go turn it up a little bit. Let's see if I can play it that fast. One, two, three. <laughs> There we go. So that's at 125. I feel like it's dark in here. Stop. 
<clears throat> and uh, so that is Uncle Jan's reel at 125. And you can, it's cool. You can do that, you know, that you can change the tempo of um, YouTube songs, uh, whatever's in YouTube. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm going to aim. I feel like it's just a little dark. Hold on a second. I'm going to aim this light down a little bit more. Boom, boom, boom. I didn't leave the room. Um, let's see if that helps a bit. Maybe I have too much light coming from the one side. Um, and Dennis, really sorry to hear about your uncle. Uh, Lee, uh, Lee is home. Um, I can text her right now and say I'm live. <laughs> Not, I don't want her to, if she's got a work to do, she's probably got a lot of emails to deal with. Uh, she may log in for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no obligation. Okay. She knows. She's aware. All right. So, um, another 30 minute lunch <laughs> turns into two hours. Um, so it, if you, if you, uh, go to, um, our discord, you can download this and print it. And uh, you can write copyright Tom Straley on the bottom. I forgot to do that. <laughs> so I may re-upload one that says that on there. But anyway, I better not get a copyright strike for that. Um, and uh, so a little bit about um, the composition of this. Okay, so the chord progression. So what, the chord progression is the one that's there right here. Okay. Um, two times through. Um, I stayed with all the notes in that uh, very first, any of those G major scales, they're all the same. Um, and I tab, the tablature is, um, is written, um, uh, let's see, the, the tablature is in open position. You know, I don't even look at the tablature. I'm, it's, it looks right to me though, I wanna make sure. Um, I really always try to read the notes if I can uh, to keep practice on that. Nobody ever, ever puts tablature in front of you at a session. So I don't really need to have that skill. Um, the advantage to the tablature, of course, though, is position. It shows you where to play something. But I fingered all of this in the open position. Okay, so that was one thing. The other thing I tried to do was try to create some moments in the piece where you would have some kind of uh, pick... Um, um, kind of pick twisters, you know, like finger, finger, <laughs> tongue twisters, finger twisters. Um, like, for example, the bar nine where it goes. Um, okay. Uh, you, you know, you really do want to try to pick down, up, down, up. Okay. So on all the down beats, you want to be picking down. So on beat one, two, three, and four, you want to pick down. And on the upbeat, you want to pick up. So if we look at bar five, there's a there's two eighth notes, and then one eighth note top. Then the second eighth note is tied to a third, which means down, up, up. So that means you have two ups in a row right here. Okay, uh, where is it? Right here. All right. I should probably do. I could do little screenshots so I have snippets of it, and I could drag it into. Uh, I could. I could probably do that. Let me see. Um, and then, and then what we can do is we can practice the little snippets of the piece. Uh, but basically, I made it as a study. Uh, it's fairly simple. I know it's going to be beyond a lot of a lot of you. Um, but uh, yeah, Leah's back home. Her cat Charlie told her all his sad stories that she, while she was gone. Cats, cats want to be left alone. Um, but then when you leave them alone, they get mad at you. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, you know, they want to be left alone on a daily basis. But if you leave them alone for like three days in a row, they get really mad. So um, let's see. Uh, where is, oh, so I'll go to the, I'll go to the Discord link. I'm going to download it to my, uh, this computer because I didn't have it on the other one. Uh, where is it? Wait. Weird. All of a sudden I don't see. Oh wait, maybe I hit that next. Oh, there we go. Tom's bookmarks. I hit the little tab thing. All right. 
Um, so I'm going to download this here. It's pretty cool. Um, and Jan, I, I asked you first, I mean, Jan, Dennis, I asked you first because I didn't want to, I didn't know if that, I, culturally, I don't know if that's like an, uh, you know, an honorable thing to do, uh, you know, to name a song after someone. I, you know, <laughs> truth be told, and you know me, I'm always opening my mouth when I should, but uh, truth be told, it's very difficult to name instrumental songs. It's like, what do I call this? So I, uh, so that's why I, I, uh. Okay, so here I'm gonna just do a screenshot here. This bar. All right, this is a very easy little bar here. I didn't put picking on here, uh, but what you allowed me to do was allowed me to have a, a, a actually what I think is a great name, and it'll mean something to me the rest of my life. Uh, um, so that's that's a good thing, and uh, I may actually record this at some point and and post it for uh, for library music. So. There's no reason why I couldn't. In fact, I may do that with all of these if I come, you know, because because every time we learn a new scale set or something, I'm going to write a, a, a song around it. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Now what I want to do is, sorry, I'm just got so many things going on here. I need my desktop. Where's my desktop? Um, there's my desktop. There's the screenshot. Okay, OBS, uh, I see you. I'm gonna drag this over here. All right. Okay, so this is bar five of Uncle Uncle Jan's reel. Um, oh, you know what? I need to I need to click away from that Discord page. Okay, <clears throat> so this is one this is one of those moments where you're gonna have two upstrokes in a row. Okay. It's open, open B. So this is pentatonic, actually. When we do the pentatonic G, it's going to be that. When we do the, uh, that'll be one of the, the, the scale sets. It'd probably be a good idea not to cover my hands. <laughs> my right hand, oops, dang it. My right hand when I'm actually showing you right hand technique here. Okay. So, sorry for covering up stuff. Uh, let's see, how do I do this? I guess I could put it over here. All right, that makes maybe the most sense. <laughs> okay. Um, this is just bar five of Uncle Jan's reel. And um, reel is just another word for song or jig or... Um, I can't think of another... Uh, there's another word too. I, I can't think of... I need to say... I need to uh, say hello to here. I'll do that in a second. Um, <laughs> Lee just woke up. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Sorry, let me get my let me get my windows in order. All right, so you can see we have open second string, third fret, and then open first string, third fret, open first string, third fret on the second string, and then open. So it's just this. Oops. Okay, so it's a little difficult with. That's not a very difficult lick, um, but the picking is a little bit difficult, and it's counterintuitive. So uh, here's the rhythm on it. One, two, three, four, one, and, and three, and four, and one, and, and three, and four, and one, and. Okay? You see that little arch there between the second and third note? That's called a tie. And what that does is that connects those two. I could have written, made the first note, uh, the eighth note by itself with what's called a little flag on it and then put a quarter note and then another eighth note. I could have written it that way. Um, it doesn't really matter. I, I just like seeing the eighth notes go by. So this this is how I like to write it. Um, yeah, we just got started easy. Um, so that's how that, it's down, up, up, down, up, down. So you can see, you know, remember when we talked about strumming and keeping your arm moving? It's kind of the same thing with picking bluegrass. You want to kind of keep your picking hand moving. <laughs> My sister just logged in. 
Okay, so let me uh, let me do a quick. I haven't said hellos yet. Let me see who's on here. Everybody's going to be happy to see you, Lee. Um, okay, so I already said hi to Roger, so you're done. All right, <laughs> Bruce, hi. Good to see you, Ed. Uh, hey, Becker's here. How's it going, buddy? Uh, and Becker teaches too. Jim Horst, good to see you. Uh, Ed, see, I already said hi to Ed. Okay, never mind. Charlie B. Nice. Uh, Bob Schumann's here. And Holly's here, of course. Good to see you, Benati. I'm not taking you for granted, Holly. Don't worry. Uh, let's see. And Benati, uh, you're in you're in Casablanca, if I remember correctly. John Y. is in Nashville. So we got Casablanca and Nashville represented in the house. Uh, Edward Edwin Brown, you're new. Um, I don't know what Li Ling Sai Chi is, so hopefully that's not... <laughs> I can't imagine that's curse words in Chinese, but uh, I hope not. Um, yeah, we do prefer English. Yes, please. Uh, although sometimes uh, Dennis gets away with uh, Dutch. So, all right. So, uh, Becker, I'm using. Um, Oh, Louisiana, Raccoon Man's Louisiana. Here, we can show that. Um, I am using OBS for this. Um, and it's, uh, let me see, about OBS, 25.0.64 bit. Um, I think it's, a, it's, it's free. It's a free and open source video recording and live streaming software. OBS Studio. Okay. So uh, if you need more information, let me know. I can maybe send you a link or something. Uh, but yeah, it seems to work pretty good. I Actually, there's another software I need to get so that I can actually, instead of playing through this microphone, I can go through Logic and use that microphone and have my tones and everything. Because I know when you hear my tones, sometimes you're not hearing. Yes, OBS. Okay. So that's one... Um, that's bar five right there, okay? Um, let's see. I'm gonna remove that. Yes. All right. Um, and I've got it open. Let's, let's look at um, bar, the intro and just the first phrase, okay? And there's there's lots of gaps in this melody, so it's 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 good for phrasing. That's the only bar where you have two upstrokes in a row, though. Okay? So that is the only bar. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this again. I want to get the... Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay, so I can get rid of this one here. Now I'm going to drag this one over. All right. So this is the int this is the the first bar. Okay. And again, if you don't have it, you can go to the Discord and download this. Um, One of the things I did too when I was writing this, if I play this melody, and Lee, I wrote this song yesterday for this class, for this live stream, and I and then uh, Dennis's uh, uncle passed away, and I asked, what's his name? And I said, can I name the song after him? And he said, yes. And so this is called Uncle Jan's Reel. And reel is a word for jig or song or uh, kind of, an, I, it's an Irish, uh, I, reels are I think generally Irish uh, violin songs. Fiddle songs. Oh shoot, my garden's here. Oh shoot. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play the track for a second. You guys jam, and I'm gonna go pay the garden.
so that's the tune. Um, so that's the tune, Uncle Jan's Real. And um, it's funny how oftentimes we get more viewers when I leave the room. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Um, let's see, we got any question. Hey, Raccoon Man. Let's see, good to see you. Yeah, Zoom, well, Zoom, I think you can still use OBS. Okay, OBS can feed into Zoom. Uh, I don't know if you can only use OBS. So I'm using, I'm using uh, YouTube, but I'm using OBS so that I can have all these images and things like that. Because I couldn't do that before. If you watch our first videos, I was writing stuff down on paper and holding it up like this and covering my face. I mean, it's pretty funny. Uh, I, this is so much nicer to have all these this option here. Okay, so um, with the melody, um, there were there like I said, there were several things that I was trying to kind of accomplish, um, learning wise for me and for us. Um, yes, Zoom is one on one lessons exactly. I mean, you could technically teach if you wanted to teach a class, but my wife did that. She had twenty five sixth graders. Ooh, that was intense. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so the start. So let me just show you some of the elements here that I have. Okay, um, that curly Q thing at the beginning is called a treble clef. Okay, that the pound sign or the hashtag. <laughs> it's so funny because. I've always known it as the pound sign or the number sign, but now it's called, everybody calls it a hashtag. The hashtag is the sharp. There's one sharp. This is in the key of G, which has one sharp, and that is an F sharp. And the way you can tell that it's F sharp, if you knew how to read music, um, if you knew the lines, okay, uh, the lines of the staff are from the bottom line is E and then G and then B and then D and then the top line is F. And if you look at the, the, the part of the sharp sign that's going kind of kind of diagonal, but more horizontal than vertical, they bracket that line, that top line. And so that's how you know that's an F sharp, okay? The next sharp would be a C, and it would be further down, and it would bracket that third space from the bottom, or the second space from the top, which would be a C. So you'd have a C sharp. Anyway, so that's how you read those things. Those are, they're not randomly placed there, although, you really could just randomly place them there um, in the sense that, oh, it's one sharp, it's G. I don't even look at, oh, which which note is sharp? I just know that one sharp is the key of G, okay? So, um, oh, nice, Becker. Uh, so, so we have um, open G and then second fret and then open B. And those two notes at the beginning, see, there's two notes before that thing's called a repeat sign. So again, I, I wanted to have all this here. And then the 4-4 four, four tells you the, the, the meter. That's the meter. And um, that basically says it's four beats. You count one, two, three, four, four quarter notes per measure. Four one-fourth notes. Four times one-fourth is four-fourths or one. Uh, one measure. Okay. I don't want to confuse you. It's not going <laughs> to... There won't be a quiz. <laughs> they there won't be a quiz on this. I have not been to Merle Fest, but but my my um, uh, I'm pretty sure my uh, stepsister and her husband uh, we're going almost every year. I think to Merle Fest. Yeah. Probably too hot and muggy for me. <laughs> Plus, I'd probably want to quit playing guitar. Okay, so those first two notes are called a pickup, all right? This is very, very common in music, and what it is is one, two, three. Okay, ba ba ba. It's 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 kind of a lead in, right? Ba ba ba. Da da da. Right. So a pickup will kind of get you going, get you going into the downbeat. And that 
and that first uh, open B string right there is a da is the downbeat of bar one, and that's a quarter note. And then we have nothing but eighth notes after that. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I don't have that next bar in there, but you can see that. So, so that's the first. That's basically the first bar of Uncle Jan's reel. So, and I try to keep it real simple, but there's a little twist in there, and I have that open G string and the open D string right after each other. But I did that because I needed to resolve, I wanted to, I didn't have to, but I wanted to resolve on a note that's in the C chord, and that's an E note, which is the third of C, okay? So, if I... Um, You know, at some point when you're writing a melody, you kind of have to turn the melody around so that it lands where you want it to land. All right, and that's what I did there. And if you want, you can just practice the, that me measure by itself or you can do the pickup with it. Oh, the circle of fifths, yeah, yeah, to do the, and it, it was, what is it, F, C, the flats are spelled B, B, E, A, D, I know that. I didn't, I never had a, a mnemonic for that, I didn't know. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Fast cars get dirty after every burnout. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, and backwards is the order of flats, B-E-A-D, and I always remember that. Yeah, it just spells the word bead. Oh, interesting. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. <laughs> interesting. I didn't know. Yeah, that's good. I, I didn't. I won't remember that, but because I'm not teaching it. Okay, so let's see. All right. Ah, dang it. I moved the wrong window. There we go. So I'm going to delete this. You know what I may do? Let me see, uh, how can I do this? Uh, remove, yes. Maybe I'll do, if I lower, if I lower my screen a little bit, I can do the whole first, let me try this, Let's see what happens here. Let's see if I can make this work. All right, where's the center of this? You know you love it when I... See, the problem with that is... Okay, I don't know that I need this anymore. Uh, let me remove that. And then let me remove this too. I don't really need that. And then I can make this smaller. Although that doesn't look like it's, is that bull? Oh, okay. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so this is the first four bars. Um, and it's definitely, I did definitely put a, a kind of a difficult passage, ah, it's still too high. Getting all this and kind of organizes. Um, see if I can get that. Keep my. I have to <laughs> stand on my toes. <laughs> um, that's going to be the that little bit right there. The last. Two beats of the fourth bar is going to be probably the most the most difficult part of it, but I really love playing that over the D chord, basically outlining a D7 chord. D, F sharp is the third, A is the fifth, and then the seventh is C. 
Remember, D7 is the only dominant seventh that occurs naturally in the key of G. There's only one dominant seventh chord in every key. And the, in the key of G, it's a D7. Okay? So, a uh, question from John. Why is G over B in the rhythms? Where, where do I have G over B? What does that mean? That means a G chord with a B in the bass. Did I put did I put G over B somewhere? I'm not seeing G over B in the song. I'm not seeing it. Lots of, uh, right. That's right, Becker. Um, so we have, um, uh, well, let's look for one thing from a compositional standpoint, look at the first note in every bar. The first note in bar one is B, which is the third of the G chord. Okay. And then I go, E is the first note in bar two, and that's the third of the C chord, and because we're playing over C. And then I repeat that melody, but then I did a little variation on it. Okay, because I wanted to get to, instead of E, I needed to get to F sharp. And so every one of these first notes is the third of each of its own chord. Uh, I didn't do that throughout, don't worry, it's not gonna be that redundant. And it's not gonna be that true to form. Uh, there is one time where I played a, just a, the, when, on the D chord, I started on a G note. Um, but other than that, every time a chord changes, I made sure I hit a chord tone, uh, which I think really, well, for one thing, if I play this by itself, you can hear, without the chords, you can hear the chords. chords go by because the melody is is very much kind of giving you signposts or markers that what chord is the melody is being played over okay all right so um oh really seventh measure in the rhythm chart i had earlier For this song, well, it was a it was a typo. If there was a G over B in this song, it was a typo. Uh, I don't. I downloaded this from the Discord, so I know it's the one that you guys all have if you've down if you've uploaded it. But okay, so again, just so you know, if you're just joining us now, um, this is a, uh, a a little song I wrote yesterday called "Uncle Jan's Real" in in uh, memory of. Um, Thank you, Zio, or Zog, I think Zog, um, in memory of Dennis's uncle who passed away yesterday of COVID. So, and my sister got back from the hospital yesterday from COVID. She's, she's joining us. Uh, so, uh, but I figured, you know, we need a happy song. And bluegrass is happy, <laughs> generally. Okay, so... Um, take this very very slow um, in on YouTube you can take the 100 um, the, the this here this video and you can sh you can slow it down which is really cool okay so I I'm gonna post this again so you have it um, I could put this 
gosh, I think you could go 25% normal speed. Is that right? What are the options here? Um, playback speed, uh, 25, 5, point, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and normal. So normal is 100. So if you go 0 0.75, let's, let's go to 50. It's going to be pretty slow. Almost hard to play for me, but... It plays. So that you can see how slow that it, that can get. And that's 0.5. You could go to 2.5. That would be, it's going to take you a while just to even get started. Um, but yeah, so if you want to practice the melody, uh, practice the melody. And if you can't, if you can't play, you don't think you'll be able to get the speed up. You can still practice the chords. Some of you are even, you know, at the point where you're still just struggling with changing chords fast enough. Okay. So if you if you're struggling with that, you can just even if and if that's where you're at, then you can even just play G and go to the C chord, try to land the C chord for two, three to get to the D. You can practice just doing that, uh, playing what's called whole notes, four four uh, four beat chords. It just lasts for four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and you can spend all that all four of those beats getting ready to play the next chord. Eventually, it'll get faster. If you keep practicing that, it'll get faster. I did a video recently on how to change chords faster. Um, and so uh, just some tips there, too, so you can look that up. I may post that in a second if you remind me. Um, yeah, Lee knows firsthand that it's a terrible virus. Okay, so um, looking at this melody, open G, second fret, and then here's our downbeat. Open B, and then it's a simple scale fragment to there okay open B second fret open I'm sorry first fret open second fret open and then open D string and then go to the E which is the which again notice that it's a third of that C chord so we're landing on a note that's actually in the C chord which really gives it really really gives it a, a like a um, on point kind of melodic movement. Okay, and then we're gonna go down to that root. So I went E, E, D, C, and then back to the pickup. The same, the pickup is the first two notes of the song. It's the exact same notes and it, it goes to the B. So it's G, A, B. And then I change the melody here instead of going, I go, Because I wanted to go melodically, I wanted to land on that F sharp for the D chord, which the F sharp is the third of the D chord, okay? So let's play the pickup to the third bar, open G, second fret, open B, and then open B again down with a down stroke, down, third fret, second fret, open, I'm second, I said second fret again, sorry. First fret, my bad. So let me do that again. Pick up, open, on the G string, second fret, and then open B, and then hit, and then you're gonna let that ring for a whole beat, and then open B, D, third fret, first fret, open, second fret, open, and then the fourth fret of the fourth string, which is your F sharp, okay? And then so start on that note, and we're gonna play it again. Okay, we're gonna go four, to open, and then we're, that open is a downbeat of uh, beat three. So I think we're going to B note. Yep. So play this with me. Um, so go four two zero four. Okay. We'll worry about the pick right hand in a second. Want to, you can think about it. OK, 
Okay? And then so from there, we're going to go D, and then four, open, fourth fret, second fret, first fret. Okay, I love that. Now the picking on that is down, up, down, up. And it's, it's basically we're playing a chord. This would be like a D7 chord. If I could go, <laughs> don't do that, you'll hurt yourself. But that's basically what we're playing. Uh, but, but I would turn that into an exercise right there. And notice how it's forcing me to keep my pinky available. You could use your you could use your third finger. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of hand movement unless you've got really good stretch. Um, but turn that into a little mini exercise. You can do ex you can turn a bar into an exercise. You know, here let me see if I can bracket. This is hard. Wait, I want to go this way. Okay. <laughs> you do a whole bar as an exercise, but I'm actually asking you to do just the last two uh, the last two beats of the last bar and you could turn that into a loop and then practice your picking on it and that's really where it's hard this is hard the left hand but the right hand combined with it down up down up you, a lot of people want to sweep it you know this is we don't want to do that okay so that's the and that's the seventh of the D chord. And that leads really nicely to, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the B. So it's gonna go to the open B string, uh, which is the third of the G chord, okay, which is the next phrase. Okay, so let me, let me move on to the next phrase. I'm gonna delete this. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, yes, delete that. All right, so now I need two hands to do this. I should probably just go ahead and <laughs> screenshot all the bars now. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just do all this. I'll do this one. All right. And then the second phrase. Oh, weird. Did, oh, the chords showed up at the bottom too. Yeah, but that's fine. I, forget, I didn't even notice that the chords showed up on the uh, tab. It's weird, I'm not seeing that G over B chord that you mentioned, JT. I mean, uh, John. And then the last one. And when we get to the fourth line, it'll be some, the first two bars of the fourth line are the same as the, um, it kind of is like, I kind of treated it like an AABA -A form. The first line, is A, the second line is A, then the third line is B, and then the fourth line is A. That makes sense. Uh, they kind of play off each other that way. The third line is definitely distinct and unique uh, compared to the other ones. Okay, so let me see. So here's the next phrase. And again, I gotta make it small. Er. No pickup on this, remember? So we're coming out of that D7 lick that hard D7 lick into this, into the downbeat of bar five right here, the G chord. And here's where we have that, oh, I touched my face, so everybody take a sip. That's our drinking game. If I touch my face, we take a sip. Yeah, we got, we got 37 people on right now. Not bad. It got in a, yesterday was, or Monday was amazing. We got up to like 65 or something. That was a new record. I think my old record was 62. So it says we've gotten up to 50, which isn't bad. Um, I started um, when I'm answering some questions, or, you know, when I'm answering questions or making people make comments on my YouTube, I started to say, hey, check out my live stream, just in case they happen to see my reply to their comment. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, I'll say thank you or whatever. Okay, so this is, uh, so it's... Mm -hmm. down. Here's where we are now. And that we looked at this bar before. And the hard part about this, it's a very pentatonic lick. Very pentatonic. Right? 
Um, it's a very pentatonic lick, which is totally fine because the pentatonic scale, the major pentatonic is, is, is inside that scale. Okay, and this is the scale we're using. Um, uh, but the, the difficult part about this is that we have um, a, a tied note. So again, that, that arch there between the second and third note is a tie. That connects them. You don't play that third note. You only play the first one, let it ring into the value of the second one. I don't want to get too convoluted here, too, because there will be a quiz on music reading. So you can take a sip. That's a celebratory sip. Yeah, Dennis has it too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Um, yeah, Dennis has a lot. There's a lot of family birthdays in December, and uh, so it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a, not a lot of celebrating, but you still celebrate life. Every day is precious. Um, and why you're spending your day with me, I will never know. <laughs> <laughs> but Dennis, you're always here with me. And again, I'm, I'm going to write new songs uh, when we start learning new different scales, when we start utilizing different scales. So, um, okay. Oh, good. You got your oxygen level good. That's good, Lee. Okay. So here we go. The, lick, uh, the first phrase... That's the phrase. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit of a play on the first. Actually, kind of not. It's its own thing. Um, uh, but anyway, so let's learn this. Ready? Open, third on the second string. Open, three, and then let hold that for a second, and open on the first string, third fret, open, third fret, open, first fret, third fret, open. So there I did a little, again, that's kind of like a little melodic hook. Very common in bluegrass music. See that? So I did this um, root, second, third root, and then I went to the sixth, seventh, root, sixth. Kind of the same numeric pattern, right? And then land on the G. So let's practice. Uh, let's practice that first bar again. One, two, three, four. Up, down, up, down, up. One, two, three. See you, Becker. One, two, three, four. All good. Romero, what's going on, man? Three, four, I like your motorcycle. You got it, now that you got a motorcycle, you gotta do bluegrass. Four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, uh, let's see. Now we're gonna do the C, let's practice the C phrase, the second bar. So it's one, three, Open, one, two, open, one, two. So it's a little tricky. Don't worry about your right hand yet. I'm gonna try to be consistent with it. The up, down thing, down, up thing. Yeah, you did. Yeah, see, if I, I think I had COVID way back in the beginning, and I had the diarrhea version. And then I read, and I didn't know I had, had it, but I had what's called fizzing, which was this weird vibration in my chest. Um, and I think it was inside my chest, but it felt like it was outside my chest, because my it felt like my muscles were vibrating, like I was going to give a, I was nervous about giving a speech, but it went on for a week. Um, so... Okay, so uh, no, 
It generally, John, uh, John's asking, so in deciding on a pattern up-down pick a text, do you follow a pattern of up-downs which allows for the most efficient in picking from one string to the other uh, as you did measure one? Uh, no, that's actually not the... It, it ultimately, I think, is the most efficient to just go pure alternating pattern. So what's happening in bar one, you're talking about this bar here, right? Uh, bar five, technically. Um, what's happening is, thank you, Dennis. Dennis just posted a link to a join link for the, for the, um, hey, Mark, good to see you. Um, uh, the, a link for the Discord site. Appreciate that, Dennis. Um, so what I did there was down, up, up, down, up, down. What I'm doing is a pure down up through this entire piece. We're going to do down up, down up, down up, a down on every downbeat and up on every upbeat or and of every downbeat. Okay, that means if you have two downbeats in a row, like we did in measure one, or we do here in measure seven, you see the G. This there, we have down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Down up, okay. So this the 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 down ups here in this will be starting at the beginning here, right there. Follow the bouncing finger that won't know where it's going. Uh, down up. Oh, see, I can't do it. Down up, up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down, down up. Okay, it's pure. That's, you, you'll notice the bluegrass players, they just keep their hand going like this. They're just going. They're not doing efficiency picking, what I would call efficiency picking. They might occasionally do that, uh, but generally they're, they're always hitting down on the downbeats. Um, and uh, it, 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 makes, it means you have to sometimes program that, in, that into your playing when you're learning a phrase like that very first phrase, down, up, up, down, up. Because you might be tempted to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But... It's just like strumming, you want to keep your arm moving. And Lee, if you've ever thought about taking playing guitar, that's one of the things you want to do. Like, like you, you might see Elvis, you know, in the movies go. Only move his arm when, when he wants to hit the strings. But in reality, you got to keep your arm moving even if you're not hitting the strings. One, two, three, four, one. So the same thing that we apply to strumming, and it makes it very true when you want to try to play fast strumming, uh, we do, we're, the bluegrass players then tend to do, and I'm, I'm not going to say all bluegrass players do it, but it's pretty consistent. So that, so we want to keep with that. So there might be a more efficient way to pluck the second bar, or bar six, the C. But if you stick with this down, uh, pure down, alter, what, what I would call pure alternating picking style, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so let's practice that second bar. It's a little bit of a finger twister, like I said. The rest of this phrase is pretty simple. So it's, it's the first two bars. The first bar gives you a challenge because you have two up strokes in a row. The second bar gives you a challenge because you've got some weird finger a string. You've got, you've got, three strings in a row. Anytime you're playing like three adjacent strings in a row, that makes it difficult. So we have one, three, open, first string, one, two, okay, uh, two, sorry, two, open, one, two. Now let's try that, the first four notes. E, D, I'm sorry, C, D, E, C. Do that much. Okay, and that's the second part of that bar. Uh, starting on the A note, A, downstroke, up with the B, down on the C, and then up with the A. And you can turn any any phrase, you can turn into a little exercise and loop it until you have it. Um, 
you know, try to connect. And then once you have one phrase and the next phrase down, maybe like this, you can practice the first two beats of that C bar. And then the second two beats. Once you have it down, then what you could do is you could try to put those two together. And that starts to make sense. You start to feel the... You, you start to get those two together. Okay, now the next phrase, uh, the next bar, um, and we're gonna go ahead and play this bar all the way to the first beat of the next bar. So, it's just a scale. We're just playing the scale, basically, the G major scale. So very much just a little piece, a little fragment, a little snippet of the G major scale. So we have open G, and again, that's a whole quarter note, so it's gonna last a whole beat. And then G again, G, Second fret, open, down to the fourth fret, two, open, and then open. So we got that D, G, D, G. And again, the last note of this that's being played over the D chord is a D, and the first note that's being played over the G chord is G. Um, in fact, this time, let's look at the first note of every phrase, of every bar. The first note on the uh, bar five is, is a B, which is the third of the G chord. The first beat of C, the C chord, is a C note, which is the root of the C chord. Then we have the G, which is the G, root of the G chord. And then it changes to D, and we have a D, or G, sorry. That's the only time we have a note that's not part of the triad just when we change chords. But it just melodically, I was only on that note for an eighth note, and immediately I'm doing the F sharp and I'm going to the D. So it definitely sounds like a D, a D lick. Essentially, if I were to play it up an octave, it would be this. So, um, so again, so let's do that. G, open, two, open, three, I'm sorry. Um, da, 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 four, two, uh, two, open. And then just go. That's it. I, I I wanted to have something there. I could have left it. I could have gone. Um, and then it goes into the new phrase. Um, again, that's that. The last two notes are open B and C. That's that's a pickup. Again, we're we're doing a pickup into the next phrase, um, into the next set of four notes. And and the next one definitely has. What, what we would call a melodic theme and variations. And um, again, I, I really tried to play on that strong. So th this, there's... You know, there's a mini theme in this over the C chord. There's a theme, here's a variation. And then I land on the G. I hope I'm not getting too deep inside of my thinking on this. Um, part of it, it was... Um, uh, trial and error, you know, when I'm writing, I'm like, oh, try this. No, that didn't work. No, this, this, and that. And then I played it over, you know, I kind of wrote it without the track playing. And then I, then I played it and I went, okay, this works. So, uh, Romero, what's going on? Um, you know, a doctor told me uh, about the COVID thing quite a while ago. One thing you can do uh, is just randomly through the day, every now and then, don't, don't get obsessive about it. But exhale through pursed lips and what that does he said is it cr the your pursed lips creates resistance for your lungs to work harder and it makes them stronger that allows them to to battle uh the disease any disease any lung disease it'll help so not necessarily new. okay so now i'm going to delete this phrase we're going to go to the third phrase we're going to get through all four phrases all four groupings um, it's only, the song's only 16 bars long, so. And, you know, I may do a recording of it. Um, I, run, I run the risk. Um, I'm probably, like I said, I, when I'm done with these, 
I may end up with five, five or six songs out of all this because I'm going to write a new song that highlights whatever we're learning. All right. So everything in here is over here. Dang it. Over here. <laughs> I'd make a lousy weatherman. Yeah. It's basically this. These two scales are the same. I can't get my. There we go. This is harder than it looks. You should try this. You, you're laughing at me, but I'm laughing at me too. But anyway, these two are the same scales. The only difference is the bottom scale here has a ghost note. You could play the B there if you didn't want to play it on the open string. Okay? Um, so this one technically has, if you play the ghost note, um, uh, uh, if you play the ghost note, um, that would be, you don't need to play the open second string. Okay. Hey, Franco. Franco. Denise Jacobs, what? Oh, great. Denise, I'm glad. <laughs> and Bruce won't, doesn't want me to tell you this, but I'm not a bluegrass player. Okay, I'm going to remove this. Uh, but I will play it for TV, film, games, things like that. But if I got called for a bluegrass record, I would recommend someone else. For the most part, it depends. I mean, it just depends. If it's kind of like alt country, that kind of thing. If it's like serious, like high speed bluegrass, no, I'm not. But, uh, um, oh, and Sam, Sam Stamos is here. John Stamos is a brother. <laughs> Actually slept in the same house, not at the same time with John Stamos, but we uh, used to rent this house in Michigan every summer. Hey, Charles. Oh, here you go. I'll give you the discord link. For, uh, okay, so the Discord link is here, um, and it's in Tom's bookmarks. So you have to join. I've got an invite here for you. Uh, let me grab that. Okay, copy. Um, here's, the, here's the invite link for Discord. And then click on the tab, it's called Tom's Bookmarks, and it'll be the most recent um, offering. Okay, it's Uncle Jan's Real PDF. And you can download that for free, print it up. And if you want, oh, my sister, uh, Sam, my sister is on right now. <laughs> so she's doing good. She's, she's uh, still got a, a hacking cough, and you still having a hard time keeping stuff down, Lee? I forget. You just said something, but it flew by. Ugh, dang. You still can't eat. I know. It's like, dang, that's a drag. Hey, Dan. Dan Gatton. Danny Gatton is an amazing guitar player. Oh, interesting. Dan Gatton. So hopefully that was good advice. I, a doctor told me, so... <laughs> That's why I, I, I relate it. Um, okay. I'm getting all my strict orders. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, drop bar, the bars, uh, what is that, 9 through 12 in now. Here's that. Okay, this is the next phrase we're going to work on. And this one's going to be a fun phrase, but it's going to be challenge. Again, I intentionally built into it some challenge here. The idea is... Uh, you're going to be alternating picking, but you're going to be alternating in the middle of strings, which in some ways, John, this is an efficient way to pluck two, um, two adjacent strings because we're kind of inside. Okay. So you right away you hear the theme. And then I, do, uh, I go to the Bs to set up the C. D, G, D, G, D, E, D, B, C, G, C, G, C, E. Okay, so the first note in the bar G chord is uh, is a D note, which is the fifth of the G. And I, this is me talking about compositionally. Um, the first note of the C bar is C, which is the root of the C. The, first, the next uh, G bar is the first note is B, which is the third of of the G chord, and then the first note in the D chord, uh, D bar, is an A, which is the fifth of the D chord. And what that, you know, landing on a chord tone to start the bar really keeps it 
sounding like if, if you didn't know the chords, you would know them by listening to the melody. I was watching Norman Blake the other day. A lot of bluegrass players will hit two or three strings at a time, right? They're kind of they're kind of strumming in the area of the strings. Yeah, I need to. I have a humidifier right now. It's not good. Right now we're at 23%. So I my, I just ordered another humidifier because um, I took, to get rid of my headaches. In fact, Lee, you might try this. I've been, because I've been, I wake up with headaches because I stupidly will eat like popcorn at night before going to bed. So I'm getting a lot of salt and my brain just gets dried out. So I, I remembered from last year, last winter, when it was really dry, that if I put heater, I mean the humidifier in the bedroom, it would keep um, uh, it would it would just keep me from getting headaches. I haven't woken up with a headache in a week since I've been putting it in there. So I uh, so I need to get another humidifier in here. I, car, guitars I think like to be between forty five and fifty five percent, and I have a lot of guitars out, but most of them are pretty cheap guitars. Uh, there's some a lot of cheap squires out, a lot of a lot of guitars that I could easily replace, and I really. Uh, rarely have a problem with any issues. It's the acoustic instruments are going to suffer more than the electric instruments. You might get a little neck issue um, with an electric guitar, um, but even with the low humidity, I, you know, I don't, you know, I, I, I seriously, I have humidifiers in my cases, but they're only as good as you opening up the case and taking them out and getting them wet and putting them back in. And I, I'm not vigilant about that. If I had an assistant, that would be one of the things they would do because I have, you know, a hundred instruments or so. And uh, many are still in the case. In here, I think I've counted, not including my the bathroom and the hallway and everything, where I ha hang up all my small instruments like ukuleles and mandolins and things like that. Um, in in this room alone, I think I have 22 or 23 instruments out. Uh, but I would say of those, there's probably you know five or six cheap squires, uh, a couple vintage, a lot of solid bodies. Um, that, that Hoffner probably should be in the case. That's an old Hoffner from the 60s, that Beetle bass. Um, um, but, you know, I, a, lot, I a lot of times I keep things out because I take my own advice about keeping things out. So I want to work on, oh, I want to work on my Django stuff. I could probably put away that Irish bazooki. Um, I'm not, haven't played that in a while. But the, you can, you can YouTube it and you'll find some, uh, definitely some experts on that. So, I'm not really an expert on it. So, okay. So practice this little little hook here. The G, the third fret of the D, and you're gonna to wanna to leave the finger on for this. Okay? You're not gonna to wanna, to, you're gonna to wanna to leave it on. Let them ring against each other, like that. That's good advice, Rich. Yeah, I yeah I need to. I like I said, I ordered another humidifier. I, um, it's coming. So, okay. So um, we have G D G. I'm sorry, D G D G. And I'm plucking down on the D and up on the open G string. So my pick is kind of in between the two strings, which actually is a very efficient. John, if you're looking, you know, talking about efficient, it actually works out in this case. If I if I were to do the opposite melody, if I did the low G first and then the D, I would be picking outside the strings. But here, because of the way the downbeat falls, and then notice I went to a B note there. I didn't go scalier. I did more of a pentatonic thing there because I wanted to set up that C note for the very next bar. So we have three, zero, three, zero, three, top string open, three, open B string, and then go to C. Uh, and 
then go to the C note. We're going to do the same thing. Let that note ring out. Leave your first finger on there. Okay, so we're going to go first and then open G, first fret, open G, first fret, and then open E. Just follow the tab, third fret, first, and then we're going to go to open. So you can take, you can, at this moment of the song, you can take a drink. You have two and a half beats to take a drink right there. And then third fret, second fret, open. I'm just going right down. I'm really just playing a backwards, I don't want to get too crazy here, but a backwards D mixolydian scale. Okay, just right down the scale. So if you look at the tab, it's starting that open B string and then third fret, first fret, open, the third string two, zero, four, two, zero. Okay. Let's play that again from the beginning, the G. And again, you can practice. Do that. Almost sounds like a Christmas song, right? So Franco, dang, you guys are chatty today. Um, yeah, Lee, if you were wondering if you <laughs> you were chatting too much, no. <laughs> Look at this. This is crazy. Franco, what what is Franco's having? Uh, oh, oh uh, so, Tom, someone gave me a classical guitar. I'm in the process of fixing it. Replace the tuners. Fix a few frets. Oh, nice. Uh, new bridge needed. It's a 40 year old guitar spending money on my luthier supplies. It's fun to have those tools though. And once you have those tools, you, you know, you've got them forever. Uh, yeah, the, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a tool guy, you know, I'm not. So that's the last phrase. Okay, so um, so this is the third phrase of this song. And you again, like I said, you can download this for free at the Discord site. Um, I may even include a, a link, uh, like a, a Dropbox link, where you can get this on this video too. So, um, But the Discord link is throughout. Um, I'll, I'll post it again, okay? Let me post it again. Oh, uh, introductions. And it'll send you the introduction to Word page. I mean, the rules page, you know, make sure you're, um, you know, be cool. Don't don't get into fights with anybody. There's nothing here. This is music, guitar stuff. It's opinions. Nothing really worth fighting about or being snarky about. Just be supportive. We all need as much uplifting and support as we can get in these times. So especially with some of us losing loved ones or where we have loved ones that are sick or my sister's sick. No, I'm just kidding. She's a lovely D. Rue, uh, you brought a kalimba. Oh, because I saw one on your desk. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my mom. Well, this one I bought. Because I was working on a movie, believe it or not. I actually have kalimba credit in a movie. So it's a thumb piano. It's an African instrument. Um, and this is, this is, but this is not. This was made in China. This one's like, you know, it's actually beautiful. It sounds great. And, but it's not very buzzy. The, the reason this is here is so you can get a buzzy sound, which is, original, you know. Um, but these, uh, these my mom brought back for me from uh, Africa. And to me sound much, that this one sounds so much more legit, but boy, that's, <laughs> 
<laughs> that's pretty roughly made. I mean, it looks just like literally like they took pieces of metal and just scraped them. You know, so and then they wrap these, you know, and get the buzz from these these things that wrap they're loose. It's pretty cool. So that's awesome, awesome Daru. Yeah, I didn't know you guys could see over there. That's funny. Um, okay, so I'm gonna delete the oops. I'm gonna delete this. Remove, yes. And I'm gonna bring in the last one. Here's the last phrase. Let me just check and see what I have here. All right, let me grab this last phrase. All right. Yeah, so if you'll notice this, <laughs> when I get it all sized, there we go. You'll notice that this uh, phrase is the same. Uh, the first two bars is identical to the bars five and six, okay? And that's another um, melodic device. It's to kind of create the concept of that there, there's there's continuity, there's a theme, there's bookends, as it were. Um, and uh, and so familiarity is real important when you're creating a melody. Um, and it should sound like you've heard it before. And in the case of bar 13 and 14, you have heard it before. It was bar 5 and 6. Um, and that really helps with having a melody that... So what I did was uh, melodically, um, and again, I, I, part of the reason, I, another reason I put this in there is because it was, you know, repeated it was because it was difficult. I, you know, I figured we we got to work on these, some of these difficult things. So, um, and then so what I did was uh, bar, see that would be bar 13, 14, 15, bar 15. I continued that theme, but over instead of over the C chord. I continue over the G, and then I did our favorite descending D7 lick. Before we did up, right? And now we're doing it down. So down, up, down, up. And so we have to practice that. So that makes so that so I did. I intentionally the melody is is part melody and part exercise. Um, and so the idea was to work some skills, uh, the adjacent strings. those kind of adjacent string skills um, to work the, the essentially what we might call sweeping, but we're not sweeping, but triad play, which again, I've always said triads on guitar are very difficult. I mean, I can play like that, I can strum it, but to play a triad individually, each note individually is very difficult. It's actually really easy on mandolin uh, because mandolin's tuned in fifths. But guitars tune in fourths, kind of, and so it it it, it doesn't it doesn't triads don't lay out well on the guitar, um, uh, so so uh, that's kind of why I built those those chord shapes into the into the melody so that we would have to be forced to work on them. Okay, so again, just to reiterate um, that previous melody, it's open. To third fret and it's held remember there's that tie that little tie connects those two notes together so you don't play that third note that you don't play you could I might you know I, I might utilize that in future melodies because we do need to be aware that we could play the same note two times in a row but that doesn't happen anywhere in the song I don't think uh, well kind of but not you know there but not two eighth notes in a row Oh, good. I'm glad. I hope this is a good exercise. And again, the, you can print up that John's. We'll, hopefully we'll have, you know, my, this is, it's good for me because it allows me to uh, be creative and write music. And um, so what we'll do is um, I'll try to write a song for every scale shapes that we're going to be working with. Okay. And Friday we may change. We may go to, to G pentatonic or to the pentatonics, I'm not sure. No, 
not sure. I'll see what I can, uh, if we're going to do all, we're going to do three scales. I hate to give you too many scales at once. Um, okay, so here again, open, third, and then open first string, third, open, third fret, second string, open. Okay, and then we got this weird little phrase here, this little mini uh, theme, theme and variations. One, three, open, one, two, open, one, two, down now on the third string. And try to use pure, that's a hard phrase to play with down, up, and, you know, pure alternating picking, but start with the down and continue with down, up, down, up. Okay, and then, and then what I did was, you know, that theme, I continued it into the next chord. Uh, so we're going to play on, this is the new, this is new music now. Uh, bar 15 of the song is open B, second fret, or second finger, sorry, first fret, I keep saying second finger, fret for some reason, first fret, third fret. So open, one, three, open. Okay. And then we're going to go to C, the first fret. Oops. Okay. Oops. So that's going to be one and then second fret on the third string, and then fourth fret on the fourth string, and then open G string. Oh, sorry. Open D string, and then open G string. Oh, okay, so you set two open strings to end the whole song. Oh, uh, wait. Really hard. <laughs> Again, I wrote something that it was hard for me, too. Um, and I want to work on my alternate picking, alternating picking. Okay, so we've had, we've got all of the phrases now. Let me play this again. I'll play it at 100, right? Is that what this is set at? Or what did we move it to? Did I change it? Oh, I, I moved it to 0.5. Okay, we're going to go normal here. Oops. Uh, no. Sorry, got it. Rent or buy the new mutants on you. All right. One, two, three. Ah, shoot. <laughs> I gotta start. For, I was trying to get all my windows in order before it started. Good thing there's a lag on this. Okay. One, two, two three. So, um, turn this off. Okay, so that is called Uncle Jan's Reel. I named it for Dennis's uncle who passed away yesterday. I wrote the song yesterday, and I asked him if it was okay if I named it after him, and he said yes. So, so it's officially titled Uncle Jan's Reel. And um, we, uh, 
the um, uh, so it's basically the very simple um, bluegrass chord progression that I have up on YouTube, and I'll, I'll give you a link to that. You can jam along with it, and you can, of course, change the tempo and everything. Um, let's see. Here's that. So what I was just jamming along with was what you were hearing. I am definitely practicing, Brian. <laughs> uh Let's see. Um, yeah, and so um, my lesson schedule right now um, is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And I usually go for, well, you can tell, you guys can uh, vouch for me. I usually go about two hours. <laughs> so now most, most of that time is me talking. So, <laughs> so if you're expecting two hours of guitar, like, pure solid guitar train, you're not going to get it. Um, but uh, thank you, R Romer. Um, yeah, I was doing some second position stuff. Um, uh, uh, but, and, we, and we may get into that. Um, and, and technically, um, you know, that's why I wrote that ghost note, because that B definitely comes in there. And so... Maybe see, I, I it would be hard for me to write. Well, probably what I'll do is I'll show. We'll do uh, the the G pentatonic in one lesson, and then the C pentatonic in a lesson, and D pentatonic in a lesson. We'll put them all together, and I'll write a song using that. I I really wouldn't really wouldn't want to write a song using just G minor or G major pentatonic. I think it would just be. I don't think I could write a good melody with just that. Um, and then maybe we'll go move on that. But but what then what I want to do is also do D, uh, G mixolydian, um, and then uh, play uh, um, G blues, G minor pentatonic, uh, G major blues. There's a lot of scales we can use in the in the uh, um, in in the in bluegrass. Uh, over the bluegrass progression because it's very pure chord progression. It's very much in the key of G. Unlike the blues jam we were doing, you had three dominant seventh chords. Technically, you were in three different keys when every chord changed. So, oh, you're very welcome. And I, um, how do I say your name? It's in. It looks like it's in Chinese or is that Korean? No, that's Korean. Let me see. No, that's Chinese. It's hard to say. So how, what, what do we call you? Because I have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and do the G scale, though, um, together. All right. Starting on the low G note here. And then, so bottom, bottom string, third fret. And then A, second fret, third fret, open D string, second fret. Fourth fret, open G string. Third, uh, second fret, open B string. First fret, third fret, open second fret and third fret. And then backwards, three two zero, three one zero, two zero, four two zero. Three, two, zero, three. So that was actually, uh, that that is the happy blues. That's a major pentatonic with a blues, blues lick in there, or a blues note in there. We'll, we'll learn that eventually, okay? All right. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of way behind on some, but we don't have any questions, right? 
Um, oh, Charlie B. My short-term memory is too old and always have to keep up with the right notes, but having fun ad-libbing. Yeah, totally. Ad-libbing is good. Um, and one thing you can do, too, um, you don't even need to play along to the track. You can just take the chord, go G, play a G chord, and then do a lick, and then play a C chord. And then G to D. Try to find some lick over D and then do the same thing. I'll do that. I'll just sit around noodling on the guitar that way. In fact, that's kind of how I got this melody, which is kind of noodling and going, oh, yeah, that's nice. So this is nice. Uh, but I wasn't actually playing with uh, the track. So. Okay. Um, way. Would that be way or we? I forget. May way. Way. Me. It's all right. <laughs> so. Um, I'm glad my, my sister's doing better. My. <laughs> no, no part of my brain is ever active. So, <laughs> um, it, it is interesting though, because when I'm writing, when you're writing, um, and, and keep in mind, I mean, much of classical music, I, I mean, I, I think, I think Via Lobos, I don't know, Via Lobos, but much of classical music is, uh, basically our studies, you know, um, basically what, what, Villa Lobos did here was he took a chord progression and he arpeggiated the chords. And so you basically have an A major chord to an E7 chord to an A sharp diminished chord to an E7 uh, chord again, E9 chord, then to an A major, then to A minor, and so forth. And what he did was he arpeggiated through them. So there, there's, it's, it's when you're doing some of this stuff. And here's the here's kind of the original, so you can kind of see my scribblings original, um, and maybe in that you can see some of my thinking. Originally, I was going to have it be 32 bars, but I got rid of the first ending and just went moved on. Um, but uh, it's a little bit of the right and left brain because what you're doing is you're on an analytical side, you're trying to make sure that you're presenting to students who are going to be playing what's called etudes. Oh, air quotes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> it's a drinking game uh, rule. If I use air quotes, we all take a sip. But the, um, uh, if you, you, you want to, so you're thinking analytically because you want to get skills to this group, but then you're thinking musically because it's got to make musical sense. It can't just be exercises. It needs to be, interesting to hear or beautiful to listen to or not sound like an exercise. Really, ultimately what I tried to do was make something that had some elements in it that I wanted to work on, that I felt like you would need to work on, and that utilized, like one of the right brain, I mean the analytical brain, and I forget which is right and which is left. Um, but that was, you know, part of it was like, I'm limiting myself to this scale. Okay, I was only using the notes in that scale, so I couldn't do, I couldn't hop up to that second position or third or fourth position. I I couldn't use the blues lick. I couldn't use pentatonic. Well, pentatonics are in are in that scale, so you, you, I I used pentatonics, but I didn't um, uh, I didn't hover around pentatonics because I know I'm going to be writing a song that's going to be highlighting all the pentatonic scales. Um, so, and that'll be, a, you know, that'll be a fun one to write too. So all of them are going to be fun to write. It's just whether I can come up with 16 bars or not. That's going to be the tough part. We'll see. Uh, but all of this is, is helping me play better bluegrass as well. And one of the, one of the things about, one of the best ways to get good at jazz is to learn a lot of jazz tunes, right? You'll learn a lot of songs. you learn, memorize the chords and you learn the melodies. And if you learn, a, you know, 200 jazz songs even without improvising even once you'll be that much more prepared to improvise um, to solo than you were if you you were just learning about soloing uh, really learning melodies helps and learning songs help and so this is technically kind of a song um it's not much different than other uh i've got is this one here 
Yeah, I mean, you can see Cuckoo's Nest here, which is a, a tune that actually uh, Nickel Creek did. Um, this one, you can see, uh, flow-wise, it's very, very similar. The only thing is it's, uh, they repeat the eight-bar phrase, and they came up with a completely different phrase. Um, and this one is, uh, you might recognize it if you listen to it, but let's see, what is it? Um, so I don't want to get in trouble, but that's, I may have to delete that portion of the video out if somebody does a copyright on it, but that's Cuckoo's Nest. That's the first A section of Cuckoo's Nest. And then basically what they did there was they go A, A, B, B, which is not uncommon for, for, a, um, for a bluegrass song. Uh, a, the a, play the A melody twice and play the B melody twice. Um, I, I don't know that this is purely A, B, A. This is not really any form per se. It's just what it is, I think. I kind of felt like this was a little bit of an A, A, B, A, because this definitely is different. Uh, but, you know, there's not a lot of similarity between these two phrases. And then these two phrases are, you know, start out identical. I didn't make any uh, variations on that. But so, so yeah, it is kind of a right left brain. Um, so do, do, I, uh, you find that picking down up, going from low to high E string, make up for the going to high low makes a difference. Not sure if it changes anything on the eighth note count. Yeah, you just want to look at that because if you if you get turned around and you start playing upbeats, uh, playing upbeats with downstrokes, um, you might get in trouble when you get to the next bar or the next phrase. Um, the, the thing is, yeah, bluegrass players will often play it in an unnatural way in order to keep that alternate picking going, which just blows me away. But they, you know, they often do it. Um, and I'm not saying it's always the case. I, I would hesitate to do that, but. Oh, that's great. Uh, so let's see, I have not been to Taiwan. I have a friend whose wife actually just passed away of cancer. She was from Taiwan. Um, but let's see. Do I have any favorite bluegrass songs recommended we listen to? Uh, no, but I did run across, um, cause again, it's not, you know, I, I, I wish I had a thousand lifetimes. If I had a thousand lifetimes and knew I had a thousand lifetimes, I would spend one of them just doing bluegrass and I would spend one just doing blues and I would spend one just doing jazz or bebop or something like that. Um, so I am going to, uh, I'll put a link here though. Um, of a video I, I ran across this looks looks like it's a series it said one of five um, uh, but let me see if I can find it and then you can just watch a bunch of literally it's 10 to 20 seconds of each of these bluegrass players and it's just non-stop <laughs> uh, here we go I think this will get me there uh, yep so check out this. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to have to pause it. Friends are buying the new music. I hit pause. Come on. Um, and from this, you, you get, it's pretty much, they're all playing live. So you will, you will get a good taste of, of, of the variety of players. And, and I would, you know, I was watching a video, um, the letters of the courts. The letters of the chords that are being played. Um, so in, yeah, that, that G is just it's a G chord, then a C chord, then a G chord, D chord, C, G chord. It's not the note that's there. Those are, that's just the, it's a chord. So basically, um, a real chart wouldn't have the tab, but I included the tab with the chords uh, there. And I, I didn't necessarily want the, chords to show up down below but I prefer them just to be up above but I noticed that they did that I might be if in the future in future uh, charts delete that um, it's not necessary to have the chords written twice but um, let's see 
Hopefully that answers your question. It's not a dumb question. <laughs> and everybody's answering it too. <laughs> Shows me the lag. There's such a lag here. Yeah, it was funny because uh, uh, <laughs> this house that we used to rent in Michigan, on uh, Lake Michigan, uh, there's, a, there's a, a book there, a guest book that you sign when you leave. And uh, we were, you look through the book and you can see everybody who stayed there and where they're from and the people from all over the place. And we, I saw, oh, Los Angeles, cool. And it was John Stamos and what was his wife's name back then? It was uh, the blonde lady that was, I think, a model or something. She may have been an actress, too. Um, and uh, they had stayed there in, in the house, too. And, and then there were comments afterwards that were like little girls going, is that from the guy from Full House? <laughs> so it was pretty funny. Uh, John Stamos has actually had a career after that. Sam Bush is great. Doc Watson. Doyle Lawson, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, there's definitely Bill Monroe, Father of Bluegrass for sure. Um, oh, Lino. Oh, hey, Jamie Banjo. Just saw you there. Um, uh, Yeah, look at what, what's the uh, yo you, Becker came back, so we can we to bump up those numbers here, right? What are we at now? Well, we got we got up to sixty. What is it? Uh, uh, sixty. I see sixty. And right now it says fifty-eight. Oh, sixty-three concurrent. I don't know what that means. I got two different numbers here. I got one that says fifty-eight and one that says sixty-five. Wow, crazy. All right. Well, I should probably play or talk more about music. Um, so, so this is the last. So, if you go to the Discord page, you can download this for free on Tom's Bookmarks. This is a song I wrote yesterday, and just to, just so you know, one of my the Mister Dennis who just signed in there, um, or just just chatted did a live chat there. Uh, Dennis is the Mister. His uncle passed away of COVID yesterday. His uncle Jan. So, um, so I asked him if I would be if I could name it for him. And it's called Uncle Jan's Real. And real is just another word for song or tune or jig. Um, re reels were often violin songs, uh, like Irish and Celtic, uh, Celtic Irish, uh, bluegrass, Appalachian violin songs. And so I just called it Uncle Jan's. I could have called it Uncle Jan's jig, but I, I didn't want to have a. <laughs> Have a have a, a soft or a soft J or the Y J sound and the hard J sound at the same in the title. It'd be hard to say. Uncle Jan's jig or Uncle Jan's yig. Yeah, I just I felt like that would be too difficult. So I felt like real would be a good good choice there. Uh, Billy Strings. Okay. Yeah, there's so many. So I I added I put a link there to a YouTube video. I think. Did you see that? Yeah. And that one is just it's it's called the video is called. Uh, the Greatest Bluegrass Flat Pickers, part one of five. So I'm assuming there are uh, five, total five. Yeah, here's another, gosh. And, it, and this thing goes on for, uh, let me see. Um, it's got two ads, so I don't know how long it is. <sighs> Hold on, sorry. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay. Oh, eight minutes. So that goes on for eight minutes, but it's like literally like 20 seconds at max of two different, um, somebody's building something. Oh, wow. It's put a new roof on the building, the house next door. That's crazy. I was like, wow, there's somebody's building something. Um, and so uh, uh, you can kind of get a sense for a lot of different um, different bluegrass players. Okay, so uh, let me play this one more time. Let's see. I'm going to use this pick this time. Uh, here we go. Dang it. One, two, three.
so that's kind of uh, no. <laughs> sorry. The second time was me just improvising over the chord progression. Uh, the, only the first half of that was actually Uncle Jan's Reel. And the link, uh, again, for the Discord join is here. Copy. And I'll paste that in here. So you have it. Jan's been, or er, I'm Jan. Uh, Dennis has been posting it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Go check the gardener. Yeah, uh, the gardener's come and gone, Paul. <laughs> Every time I leave the room, my viewership goes up. It's kind of like, dang, I should just, I should just let the let the camera run in the room when when I'm not here, and see how many views I can get. That'd be funny. Um, yes, that's true. Actually, you're right. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for that. Um, if You'll see a bunch of links below in the description of the video. I put down links like picks I use and strings and capos and stuff like that. I, I need to kind of update it. It's kind of dated, and I wish I could change all of them at once if I did that. It's kind of a drag because I think some of the links are dead links now. Um, but uh, I, I, uh, if you click on that and do your shopping, you don't have to buy the item there. If you do any shopping after that, I get a little piece of that. I get, you know, one, two, three, four percent or something like that. Um, I always do my shopping, my Christmas shopping on Amazon. I always go through one of my links so that I make sure that I'm getting uh, a little bit of kickback from that. So it, it comes in, it, you know, it adds up. I mean, it, it's typically 10 to $20 a month. So it's not a lot of money. It's not like, a, I'm, <laughs> but it's always nice to have a little extra padding in your checking account. And then the other thing is that there have been times where it got up to three or four hundred dollars because somebody bought a church went through one of my links and then they went on and bought a whole PA system through the link, uh, like bought a bunch of stuff for their for their church, and uh, so um, that uh, that was a, that was a surprise and a blessing. So um, let's see, Holly, let's see, um, oh brother, where art thou? Yeah, that's such a great such a great classic film, and that's such a great song too. The uh, well, there's several of them, and T-Bone Burnett did a great job of putting the music together. I've known T-Bone for, I've known T-Bone longer than I've known my wife. I've never worked for him, but um, I, I don't even know if he's in town now. Is he still in town? I don't know. In L.A.? He used to be in Orange County. That's where I met him, was in Orange County. Long time ago, he was producing Christian records, and I was down there. I don't think, yeah, I didn't, I was working on a record in the same studio as him, and that's when I met him, so, oh, awesome, MT, oh, and let me pull up the uh, video I did, because um, I mentioned to you that I did a video, uh, or I mentioned to you all that I did a video about uh, changing chords faster, so I know it's a real struggle, um, Sorry, text. Um, and uh, uh, let's see if I can find that video uh, content. See, they changed it. it. Used to say videos. Now it says content. Okay, it's not that long ago. It was a pretty recent video, and it was called "Tips: Seven Tips for Changing." There we go. Change chords faster. Okay, so this. Um, so here's that link right here for that video. Okay, so this video, that video will help you change, give you some, just some basic things. I, I had a student years ago who, God bless him, I mean, um, he, I think he just wanted to give me money every week. I think, I was charging $10 a a half hour back then uh, when I first moved to California and I, I really had no income at all. And, um, and so he, uh, his name is Tom. And uh, by the way, when I say Tom, does it say, sound like I'm saying something else? Cause every time I go to Starbucks and they say, what's your name? And I say, Tom today, she heard Paul. And when this was sitting on the counter, I said, Oh, that's not mine. And I'm standing and she goes, Here's your cup. I said, no, that's for Paul. And she goes, oh, that's you. I said, no, I'm Tom. <laughs> so, 
Anyway, but I get dumb more than anything. D-O-M. How common is the word dom, name Dom compared to Tom? That makes zero sense to me. Um, uh, so, uh, but basically, um, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I give in that in that video. Sorry, uh, on the with, with Tom, the, my that student Tom, he would um, uh, he just he had turtle hands. Sorry, I'm gonna move that down a little bit. There we go. He had turtle fingers. I mean, he just could you know he would just like go from C to G. He would be like uh, it was just way too intentional. And this guy was a very smart person. He was an engineer. Um, and he was a PhD and everything. I mean, he's a very smart guy, but he just was, in, I think in part ways, engineers are like that where, you know, they they don't want to make a mistake, you know, right? Roger, I doubt Roger was the first on, I doubt he's still on, but you know, my son, Jack is an engineer and you know, it's like his, his handwriting is beautiful. It's meticulous. And, um, uh, he just, you know, he, he, and so this, this student of mine, Tom, he just, he took for years and I couldn't get him to change from C to G fast enough. I couldn't, I couldn't get him to change from G to C fast enough in years of lessons. But I said, and I, and you know, here I am barely making it. And that $10 a week was a godsend. But here I am telling him, you know, Tom, this may not be the, the hobby for you. He goes, no, no, I really like the, you know, so he just liked hanging out, I guess. And, uh, he, but he struggled so hard and gets so over and I would get frustrated with him. And it was like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I never looked forward to the lesson, you know, it was like, uh, so, so, so bad. So, um, so again, if you go to my discord, you can download this for free. I wrote this yesterday. Um, it's a little bluegrass melody that I wrote. Um, and I'll play it for you here in a second. Um, yeah, sometimes it's Becker, it's a physical thing, a physiological thing where they've just got like rigor mortis fingers or something. Uh, but he, and he did, he did walk kind of slow too. kind of, he, this is not a guy who was like in his eighties. This was someone who was in his, probably when he took lessons from me, he was in his early thirties. Um, so it wasn't like he was old. He just, he just couldn't move. But that video that I posted now, that's way gone now, since you guys are commenting so fast, um, is uh, is one, it's seven tips for changing chords faster. And uh, so that can help you if you're really having troubles with it. I, I came up with some ideas. Um, and again, it's very difficult. You know, uh, Becker, one thing that I would do um, back when I was teaching, before I, when I had a new student that was the first lesson, he never played guitar before, you know what I would do is I'd flip the guitar over before the lesson and try to play left-handed. I should have, I should keep, I should have kept the guitar around strung left-handed. And it, Basically, the reason I would do that is to remind me where they're at and realize, oh, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and that you've got to explain something to someone uh, that they've never had explained to them before. And so that really, really would help me, um, uh, would really, really help me be more relatable. And, uh, and I really try to do that. Here, I hope that's kind of one of my goals. Okay, so again, this uh, on my so Uncle Jan, uh, this is I wrote this song yesterday and I named it after Dennis's uh, uncle who passed away yesterday of COVID. So I asked him, is, okay, thanks Dennis for letting me name it after your uncle. Because I, again, I had to ask because I didn't know if that would be like completely inappropriate or not. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to play this melody again. Uh, and, uh, oh, me. okay. Uh, where are we? Gosh, i got to get all my windows straight. All right, so where is that chord progression? Here it is. All right. Um, I'm going to use the, the Wigan Gypsy Jazz pick. One, two, three.
we come up on this? Here we go, this melody. Jack me up, um, but yeah. So that's the now. Let, now the, again, like I said, with the, with YouTube, you can take that's at 100 beats P, BPM. The chord progression, the the G C D C one, uh, G C G D G. Basically, um, I can put this at. I can speed it up to 125. All right. So that's going to be so 1.25. And since the song is set at 100 beats per minute, if you turn change the speed to 1.25. Um, now it's going to be 125 beats per minute, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging. But, but it's great because you can use a, the you know the jam track that I created for this. Um, and let's see if I can. Well, I'm not going to worry about having my windows in order. I'm just going to because I have to play. One, two, stick with the program here but anyway <laughs> so that was kind of a couple times through but that's at 125 i wonder what's 150 sound like so here's 150 i don't know if i can keep up with it at this at speed but 150 is more than the speed of a normal bluegrass one two three <laughs> It sounds more like a bluegrass tune at that symbol. And again, it goes, let's see, what's the next one? 175, so I can, let's try that. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. One, two, three, four. Hold on. Let me get rid of this, because I'm sure this is blocking my hand, sorry. Uh, remove. Sorry, so you won't have that there, but that's just the, that's just the last four bars of the tune. Sorry. Uh, Uh, MT, yes, I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, on the Discord, I have a list of all the lessons. I've got to update it, though, because I, I finally came to the end of the three three uh, pentatonic scales for blues. I finally came to the end of that, so I need to 
make note of that. But okay, so see if I can play it at 175. It is my melody. I should be able to, right? wasn't wasn't pretty but it was at that so so again that's the cool thing about youtube that's the jam track i did for this um that that i just could call my bluegrass jam track I, I uploaded it a long time ago um and uh uh i uh um i uploaded that jam track a long time ago but the cool thing about it is it just set at 100 bpm that when you know that if you change the the speed in YouTube, which you're, you can do, you can go up and down, um, that uh, you you know actually what tempo you're playing at. So, could, because it starts at 100, which is freaking brilliant. Um, so 125, 1.25 would be 125 beats per minute. Uh, 1.5 would be 150 beats per minute. 175 would be 175 beats per minute, right? And then if you if you go all the way to two, like if I click on two times, if it, that's a double speed, so double 100 is gonna be, 200 beats per minute, which is pretty not unusual for bluegrass. So that's not impossible. It's because because again, this is mostly eighth notes. Yeah, it's not that's not impossible. You could totally. I mean, you yeah, and that's the great thing about this is you can work. You can work the a song up, and if it's if 100 is too fast, you can put it at 75.75, which takes it down to 75 beats per minute. So we go to all the way down to point, point, point two five, which is. <laughs> so it's totally not gonna work. <laughs> it just sounds like. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard any of those like pop songs, like Bieber songs played at, at like s s what one like what eight hundred what's eight times slower than or one I forget the speed. It's like, but it's perfectly like uh, transformed down, uh, and it so a, a three minute song lasts like thirty minutes. It sounds eerie and like choirs and strings and it's funny because if you know what the track sounds like originally you're like wait there's that's like beats and synths and guitars and voices and things like that but it doesn't sound anything like that when you stretch it out so that's kind of what happens with with that thing you get that at 25 and you're 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 in a very <laughs> slow sp place so um but yeah so that's a great tool for for really wood shedding um and getting better at uh uh, getting better at at, the, at, at, a, at a song, you know, learning a song. So, um, and I would love to have di some different chord progressions, but for right now, like, see, the drag is they didn't, on this um, chart on Cuckoo's Nest, they didn't write the chords out. But I would love to have some, you know, because I can, I can grab a chord progression from any bluegrass song and write a new song over it. That's totally allowed. So, um, oh, shoot, that's right. I got to do something. I got work to do today. Believe it or not, I actually have work to do. Uh, okay. So, um, all right. So, what am I? Am I missing? Let's see. Oh, that's good, Becker. Yeah, you know, and and uh, check out the OBS when you get a chance, though, because it allows you, like I said, it allows you to put, you know. Um, and my friend Josh may be on. I don't know if he's actually watching right now, but if he is, uh, Josh is has been doing um, mixes on um, live, you know, live mixes and talking about mixes, mixing and mixes on um, on Twitch. And uh, and so he, I'm not sure. I think he uses an OBS because I can have multiple cameras. He he actually has multiple cameras. He actually has a camera for his dog, so you can see how his dog is doing. Um, and uh, um, 
Yep, I'm here every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Lord willing, at 9 a.m. And I typically go to 11, but try to get here as early as you can. I usually start the lesson about 10 minutes in. In fact, Bruce, I appreciate you doing that the other day. Gosh, you know, Bruce, you spent too much time <laughs> on me. Uh, but uh, you can, uh, he started like saying, oh, the lesson starts at 10 minutes or whatever. Uh, somebody else was doing that for a while. I forget who, maybe Catherine, I think, was doing that for a while. It kind of helps out because I do tend to wait a little bit on the live stream until more people have shown up. Um, right now, we are getting close to a record here. Uh, 64, boy, that's that's not a record. It's really close. Now we're really falling off. I guess people know that I'm getting tired and getting ready to sign off. So it's down to 46. But it got up to 64, which isn't bad for me. Um, and uh, so... So what I'm going to do is, um, uh, let's see, F Friday, I'm, we may do, uh, I'm trying to think, okay, I think what I'm going to do is on Friday, I'm going to, we'll get away from the G major scale, because we're going to be utilizing that more, in, in, you know, I think as we go, but um, I won't have a new song for Friday, um, but I won't do a new song until I have all three pentatonics because that's what we're going to do the next uh we're going to do three different pentatonics but on friday we're just going to do um one uh the g major pentatonic um, but i will go ahead i think i'm trying to figure out the best way i don't want to overwhelm you with too many scales and stuff but i think i will show you the major blues pentatonic okay so we will have that and that will um you'll have two technically two scales but really it'll be a scale and then a scale plus one more, the same scale plus one more note. And then we'll we'll fart around on that scale um, over G chord and C chord and then D chord. It won't work great, like just like the blue scales, you know, we we made some changes in them to accommodate the, the one, four, five. Uh, we're not gonna do that here. We're gonna do, um, we're gonna do more of a pure uh, pentatonic. We're gonna learn pure major pentatonic G, major pentatonic C, major pentatonic D. I'll show you why. Um, so I really like pentatonics on the, the mandolin, um, and because of the way the mandolin is tuned. So there's G major pentatonic. Uh, let's see, C major pentatonic. D major pentatonic. Um, no. See. It's a G. No. What am I doing? D. Boy, I really have to turn up. Put my. There it is. No, there's, there's no G in there. That's where I was getting off. So, like, if I were to play over the progression, um, I think I have it set back to 100, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, what I'll do here is just play... Um, one. G major pentatonic over the G. the zone with a like I said like before when I picked up the mandolin it was like oh shoot what are those scales again it takes you got I've had the guitar in my hands too long today <laughs> so it takes a while to get these if I just sat on one chord like if I just uh, go to logic here and I'll just bracket the one chord at G or so just do Oh, wait. <laughs> I 
I got a <laughs> bluegrass in five. I don't know. annoying loop um what i would do to root is figure it out for yourself man that's all i did i just went and go okay here are the notes g d a and e and i went sat down and went okay well if that's g then there's a b c d e and then go from there you can figure out that you know you don't need to work on like e flat major necessarily or B flat major or F sharp major, you know, you're gonna, if you got a mandolin in your hand, you're probably gonna be playing the key of G, the key of D, the key of C. Those are gonna be the main keys. And you get those three scales down, the G major, C major, D major. Um, and then from there, you, you know, you might learn some others. Um, but, and then start working on the pentatonics. You know, if you know the G major pentatonic is G, A, B, D, E. Um, and then if you know the flat third, Right there, you know where the seventh is. Then you can start working out some things. I don't. I usually have a strap, so it's hard to play when it's without a strap. Well, then that then what I would do is I would just Google G major scale. And then uh, Google, um, maybe print up a, a mandolin fretboard and just find them yourself. Because um, here's the thing is, when you go and discover them yourself, you're like looking at this and you're going, okay, put the dots down. We all learn, you know, different ways. And there's like, what, five or seven different ways that we learn. And you probably, Daru, probably most, um, mostly, uh, I know it's really hard to see a uh, mandolin, the hands are, you know, the frets are so small. Um, but you learn hands-on. Um, and so, but what you can do is you can sneak in some information about what your hands are on. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then what you'll start to see is, oh, there's a seventh, oh, flat seventh. And, you know, the first, you know. Right, that was the first thing I learned on mandolin. Um, but yeah, it, you, you, you'd be surprised how you can learn. So what you'll be doing, Daru, if you do just Google, um, uh, if you just Google like major G major scale, it'll show you the notes in the G major scale and you, you find a fretboard, print up a fretboard, uh, you know, diagram of the uh, mandolin. You can print up blank fretboards. Uh, there's websites where you can do that. And then you can start writing those scales in. Um, and the cool thing about mandolin is that you can, you can play. Triads are so easy. You know, like pentatonic licks, like, right? You know, t p pentatonic lick, like a Jimmy Page riff or whatever on a guitar is not easy, but it's like it has a certain shape to it and a certain thing where you get, once you get it down, you got it down. Triads have always been difficult on guitar, but on mandolin, there's, you got G, B, D, G. Here's D. Here's A. So man, you know, it's like, here's C. A little easier if I had the strap on, but. Um, but those, that kind of lick would be really hard on a guitar, but on a mandolin, it seems like super easy and fun to play. So, 
Yes, <laughs> sorry, Ollie. Uh, you know, this is not an expensive mandolin. I would love to have a great mandolin. Um, this one was like 300 bucks. Uh, good mandolins are like a five grand, you know, in the five grand range to get a really good like Gibson mandolin. And that's because the tops are carved. Like the piece of wood is like this thick and they car hand carve it and tune it and everything. Take a lot of time on it. It's a really good quality piece of wood. That's the most expensive part of the mandolin. This one is just like formed wood, <laughs> you know. It serves a purpose. Again, I wouldn't probably get like, I wouldn't take a gig playing mandolin on a bluegrass record, but I, I played mandolin on a thousand TV shows and uh, uh, I played it on records where I'm just strumming, you know. You know, it's it's a great, it's a fun little instrument to have, and um, in some ways, if you've got smaller fingers and you're having a hard time getting your hands around a guitar, this is a great instrument to, to replace it. Now, you do have to push down two strings at once. So it's eight strings, but you're not playing eight strings, it's pushing down two at once. So you kind of do need to have that skill set, but that just doesn't take that long. I mean, it, do, it really doesn't take any time at all for that part of it. Um, and then the other thing is the, the right hand, if you want to have, like... want to sound like the godfather then you got to start working on harmonic minor scales when am i going to break out that resonator well maybe maybe friday i'll break it out <laughs> i was just playing it on something oh I was, I was writing a pop track and i i added some resonator to it because i thought it sounded kind of cool um so uh um uh just it's kind of a, like a kind of a slide just a weird almost more of an effecty kind of thing so well, I'll tell you what, that coffee's kicking in. I got all this energy. Oh, and I had a I had a burrito for breakfast. So I, I definitely had had protein as well. All right. I have gone on for an hour, two hours and twenty minutes, you guys. Come on. <laughs> Where are we at? Okay, yeah, see it's settling down. We're down to below 40 now. So I will um uh um, I will see you all on Friday, Lord willing, and we'll I think we're gonna go ahead and do G. Major pentatonic, and I'll add a, a blues note in there. So we have like a G major blues pentatonic or whatever I'm going to call it. I'm not sure what to call that scale. but um, And uh, we'll use that to play over uh, the progression. Uh, but mainly we're just going to woodshed that, maybe get some snippets, get some licks, things like that. And then um, we are going to, um, uh, we'll probably the very next lesson learn the C pentatonic, the major uh, pentatonic, and then the D major pentatonic. That, you know, because that's the sound that this... There's G major pentatonic, uh, C major pentatonic. D major pentatonic. Let's see. start getting some licks in there once you've had it in your hand for a couple minutes so um but yeah those so we'll probably learn the four the, those three pentatonics uh, i'm not sure how quick we'll go on it pretty quick um one one scale per lesson okay so everyone take care and god bless you i'll talk to you all later we got a lot of uh we got up there i think we got 63 64 i think i saw yeah so we'll see maybe it was higher it's hard to exactly to see um and then uh, hopefully I got some new subs here too. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> yes, my sister's enjoying the community. It's fun, isn't it, Lee? Really nice people. So um, uh, it's really good. It's really good to have everybody here. So all right, hasta luego, everyone. <laughs>